This is Tomo News for Thursday, August 10th. Police ask public not to shoot after recent Bigfoot sighting. An alleged Bigfoot sighting in McDowell County, North Carolina this past week has captured the imaginations of cryptozoologists and naysayers across the country. It's also motivated police to warn citizens not to shoot at any suspected creatures in the event it's not what they think it is. On August 4th, a team of amateur investigators known as Bigfoot 911 were on the lookout when one of the members caught sight of a large bipedal animal covered in hair. John Bruner claims the being took off into the dark forest, so we quickly gave chase and managed to catch sight of him again near a broken tree. Bruner says for a second, the two were locked in a stare down, recalling its face was solid black with no hair on it. The hair looked shaggy all over. The legendary beast then disappeared into the forest once more, but Bruner will never forget the sight of seeing its buttocks flexing with each step as it dashed. Unfortunately, Bruner did not manage to get a photograph of his rarest of rare encounters because he and his colleagues didn't have their cameras at that particular moment. Unbelievable! Nevertheless, police in nearby Greenville, South Carolina, are reminding locals that, as bulletproof evidence of the tall, hairy creature has yet to surface, firing weapons at any suspects may end up wounding a fun-loving and well-intentioned person sweating in a gorilla costume. Meanwhile, 36-year-old Gowan McGregor of Minnesota has since claimed he was the one the Bigfoot hunters bumped into that night. McGregor says he was in the woods, dressed in a coat made of raccoon pelts, performing a shamanistic ritual in the hopes of reuniting with the creature, whom he's already spotted before, apparently. There sure are some interesting folks in the Bigfoot community. Bouldering teen takes selfie and falls 100 feet to his death. Bouldering is serious business, and when you're doing it alone, taking selfies can be deadly. On August 6th in Colorado, 17-year-old Carter Christensen went for a solo free climb at the first Flatiron Rock. When he reached the top, naturally, he took a selfie and posted it to Instagram. What happened next is unknown, but somehow Christensen ended up more than 100 feet below the point where the photo was taken, just minutes after it was posted. No one is believed to have witnessed his last moments, but hikers nearby heard the loud thud of something hitting the ground. When emergency crews finally found his body, he was beyond saving due to massive traumatic injuries suffered after the fall. The first Flatiron Rock area is a popular destination for the rock climbing community. And though Christensen was known to be an avid climber, his final photo is a reminder that even the most experienced must cede to the mountain. Err, uh, so where exactly is Guam? North Korea says it will soon be ready to launch missiles that will land near Guam as tensions ramp up between Pyongyang and Washington. Guam is located in the western Pacific Ocean, around 2,100 miles from North Korea. It is within the range of North Korea's medium and long-range missiles. The 210-square-mile island is a U.S. territory. It has three U.S. military bases, including an Air Force base that hosts B-52 bombers and fighter jets. Some 6,000 U.S. troops are stationed on Guam, which has a total population of around 162,000 people. Guam is protected by the U.S. Army's THAAD missile defense system, which is designed to shoot down ballistic missiles. According to state media, North Korea's military is waiting for approval from Kim Jong-un to fire four rockets that will land in the sea about 17 miles from Guam. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump has warned Kim's regime that any threat to the U.S. would be met with fire and fury. How easily can the U.S. declare nuclear war? U.S. President Donald Trump says the U.S.'s nuclear arsenal is far stronger and more powerful than ever before, after warning North Korea that their provocations would be met with fire and fury. Amid the escalating tensions between the U.S. and North Korea, some have expressed concern over whether a war, specifically nuclear war, is imminent, and how easily the U.S. president could make that happen. The U.S. Constitution gives Congress the power to declare wars and authorize funds to support them. The president would normally appeal to Congress for authorization if he wants to declare a war. However, the president also has temporary authority to use force for up to 60 days without congressional approval. Even though the decision cannot be opposed, Congress can choose to cut funding if it believes the military engagement is not in the best interest of the country. Under international law, the U.S. may only use military force against another sovereign state if it faces an imminent, unprovoked, and certain threat. The U.S. may use force in anticipation of that attack, but it cannot declare war based on potential threats. 
or the U.S. could declare war after receiving authorization from the U.N. Security Council, in which it serves as a permanent member. However, other permanent members, such as China and Russia, could use their veto power to prevent the U.S. from taking action. The U.S. and North Korea came very close to war in 1994, after Pyongyang announced its intention to withdraw from the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The crisis was reportedly resolved after a top-level diplomatic meeting of former U.S. President Jimmy Carter and former DPRK leader Kim Il-sung. It's raining rats! From the E. coli outbreak in 2015 to the more recent norovirus scare in Virginia, seems Tex-Mex chain Chipotle just can't catch a break. And now with rodents reportedly making an appearance at a store in Dallas, you might want to start bidding those burrito bowls goodbye. At least three rats were crawling around inside of Chipotle in Dallas's West End Historic District in what we can only assume was a quest to satisfy a mad craven for Mexican. The rats soon dropped in, falling from the ceiling and scaring the guacamole out of the lunch crowd. A video taken by a disgusted customer shows one rat lying limp while its companion scurries about, and another tries to frantically climb up a wall. Employees apologized and took the varmints away, and the rat's rear entry point was later spotted and repaired. Still, Chipotle's taking extra precautions, so the store has been temporarily closed for remodeling. On the bright side, at least the rats weren't cooking the meals. It might have been cute in Ratatouille, but in real life, that pesky rodent is gonna get it faster than you can say Disney. The Great American Eclipse will cause massive energy loss. The eclipse is just around the corner, and while many are excited, the astronomical event will also lead to a gigantic dip in solar energy production. The Great American Eclipse may cause a loss in solar energy production, enough to power some 7 million homes. According to U.S. government data, California provides 40% of the solar energy in the U.S. The state will see its solar power generation capacity reduced by 70% between 9.02 a.m. and 11.54 a.m. local time on the day of the eclipse. To fill the power gap during this time, solar-reliant grids may turn to natural gas or hydro plants for energy. The eclipse is set to take place on August 21st, 2017 in the U.S. Heard the one about Ikea rugs and Game of Thrones? You know nothing, Jon Snow. Winter is coming. Well, it will be at some point, and Ikea has got just the thing to keep Game of Thrones fans warm when the weather turns cold. Thronies have reportedly been flocking to Ikea in their droves, after it emerged that characters like Jon Snow and Sansa Stark get parts of their costumes from the Swedish furniture store. The show's budget maxes out at $10 million per episode, so costume designers spent whatever copper pennies they had left on some sheepskin rugs from Ikea. The designers cut the rugs, shaved them, added a few straps, and then made them look worn, so members of the Night's Watch could wear them as capes. According to Ikea, online searches for the rugs have surged, and they're now expecting a big boost in sales. The rug info was actually revealed last year during a talk by one of the costume designers, but only received wider exposure this week. <laughs> These Ikea staff at a store in London are clearly ready for the incoming rush of thronies looking for rugs.